Okay, what's up everyone? What's up everyone? Welcome to episode six Planet Xbox Podcast. And we're back at you. I'm your host, Best Bot Kid Smooth. Got co-host ILP Lord Attic, fresh out of uh, uh intense labor. <laughs> How are you? Intense labor. I wouldn't go that far, <laughs> but I was uh I was moving. So yeah. <laughs> I forgot all about it. I was sitting there, and you said, "Where are you at?" And I was like, "Oh, oh shit! What's what's the day?" <laughs> like, yeah, no, I it's like I like I expected to start earlier, but I had to go and get breakfast. We did, had to do like some early morning shopping, and then and like that twelve o'clock, one o'clock sort of just crept up on us. Uh, Logan, is that a classic Batman shirt? Are you wearing? No, nah, it's a, it's a it's a Lego Batman shirt. It ain't a classic one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a Lego Batman, man. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, how are you doing? Yo, I, I've been doing good, man. Uh, just been playing a crap ton of games. Final Fantasy 16 came out, so that was uh, that's consuming my entire weekend, uh, obviously. So, yeah, it's a, it's good. It's been good. Awesome. Attic, what are you playing? Nothing, really. I've just been so busy doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did jump into about five hours of Final Fantasy 16. Mm-hmm. But, you know, besides that, I haven't really had an opportunity to play, like, as much as I would like. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, just, uh, you know, as I've seen a lot of, like, you know, you know, coverage on it. A lot of people are uh, complaining about the one button playthrough. Um, what's <laughs> is that uh, is that cap or what's go- going on with that? I've seen a couple clips on Twitter. Well, I mean, you comp- the, 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 it depends on what clips you're talking about, because mm. if you're talking about the one clip from somebody that I think you're thinking of, it's the opening sequence, and it's a cinematic uh, sequence. There really isn't much for you to do right there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I get that part, but outside of that, um, no, I would say. Okay. Okay. Um, so we got some uh, Patreon questions uh, to get into. We actually got a, a few good questions. So shout out to all the Patreon members. Uh, again, uh, Plan Xbox is now you know powered by Weapon Wheel Network and the Weapon Wheel Podcast, and uh, this podcast is you know early access on the Weapon Wheel Patreon. So make sure you subscribe to that. Uh, and uh, to those who are watching, you know outside of Patreon, you know still support. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and uh, you know you know make sure you. Uh, tune in weekly but on patreon is where you get to ask these questions where some of these questions can take up you know have a a good impact of the flow of the show and i think today's questions are pretty damn good uh so we're gonna start with uh Juan Tan soup <laughs> he says is that the wonton dude yeah yeah it's wonton yeah uh, he says, what's up, guys? I want to know how do you feel about Xbox potentially skipping a mid-gen refresh console? Do you think it's smart or do you think a mid-gen refresh is needed? Who wants to tackle that first? Uh, I don't think they're going to skip it. You Even despite what Phil, Phil Spencer said? Yeah, I think people say a lot of things, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it all comes down to... Are they going to hold their... Because remember, they, they said that they're not going to lose to power again. So it's just like, are you auto, are you already going back on that? Or are you just going to let PlayStation for like three to four years have the best performance on everything? And it's already happening now. Imagine a PlayStation at a console that can even run games like, like Starfield at 60 frames. You know what I'm saying? Fair, yeah, fair enough. Logan, your thoughts on... Uh, is your- um- I would I would say that they they more than likely have to, but I think Xbox has put themselves in a bad position to do a mid gen upgrade, um, mostly because they have the what is it the, where you have to build for the Series X and the S, you can't build for one or the other right now, um, and so if they add a mid gen on top of an already, I would assume you know you have the Series X and S. I mean, what what are they gonna? How are they gonna handle the the Series S? Because that seems to be like a decent chunk of their sales, right? Is from um, the Series S. So how would they tackle that with like a more powerful system? Um, would they uh, lift that requirement of you know all games needing to be built for for the Series X S and whatever the hell else they you know put out there for this mid gen? Or would they say, hey, you can 
build games now for you know whatever you want to build them for right if you if you can't get the run on the s you don't gotta it's not a requirement so but i think that that's going to be like a difficult spot for them i think that they put themselves uh because they just have that and we know it's less powerful i mean it's not you know it's not an unknown thing and so i think they're going to kind of get themselves in a corner that i'm not sure that they're going to know how to get out of because of that nice. um so i i think they they need one um because like you can see at least for some reason xbox seems to be the the only uh console putting out um 30 fps next gen games um so that's where i'm kind of like interested to see what they would do and how they would tackle a mid-gen refresh um but i do think either either they need to drop the requirement of games needing to be built on the s and maybe that might help with performance issues um companies might be able to delegate more resources to just focus on the x um but if not i'd be interested to see what they do i mean that's a good observation i think um i i don't have an issue if the thing is if, if playstation comes up with a ps5 pro and depending on the power gap it is uh you know to series x and whatnot you know it, it would suck for xbox not to uh I guess address it or try to meet them there. I personally don't want a mid-gen uh refresh. I think it was necessary for uh the PS4 and the Xbox One because they were so underpowered at the time that they came out. Um whereas the Series X and the PS5 weren't and they're just literally hitting their stride in terms of availability. Um I don't think these consoles have been fully explored. Yeah, sure, they're, we're seeing games hit 30 FPS and whatnot, but uh, I don't think games are still hitting their, you know, their peak. Um, so it's, it's like, I don't I don't really want, I don't want to have to go through that again. Um, and it, yeah, it would be harder for Xbox Series, uh, the Series consoles to do it, because what, you got to do a mid-gen refresh for the Series S and technically the X at that point, right? Um, and I feel like, if PlayStation were to do it, sure. They and remember the PS4, the PlayStation did it last time first. They did the Pro that came out in 16, and then the One X came out a whole year later uh, in uh, 2017, um, and it was more powerful than a Pro. But um, but the PS4 Pro gap compared to the PS4 wasn't even all that significant, whereas the One X gap uh, to the One was super, was very significant and significant to the Pro. So it's like at that point. How, where do they, what do they do? Like, what are we going, are you moving to different architectures at this point? It's like, I feel like this generation, especially if uh, new consoles are coming and potentially 2028, we're going to do a mid-gen refresh in 2024. Um, at that point, I'm not sure if it'll be, uh, you know, worth exploring. So uh, I guess the hope is that PlayStation doesn't do it. So Xbox doesn't have to do it, but I, I, I find it difficult for Xbox to do due to their two skew uh, lineup. So good question, Wonton. Uh, Tony plays games. He says, "Who would you like to interview on Planet Xbox and why?" Um, I'd like to interview. It's only really, really few people I would like to interview. Um, Phil Spencer, ultimate goal. Uh, that's Matt Booty. Because I feel like you can get more about games out of him of first party. Because he seems always eager to talk about first uh, party games. Um, and um, maybe uh, Cliffy B is uh, who I'd like to uh, definitely interview on the podcast. Uh, Attic has more interviewing uh, 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 history uh, with the ILP, so he's probably interviewed a lot of the people uh, or have access or at least close enough to the people that I mentioned. But is there anyone you um, you would like for us to get on this podcast? I want to yeah. interview high end XPR people and ask them why the industry ran the way it's at is like because. It's just like I feel like certain things they do just makes no fucking sense, and I would love to like pick their brain on why it runs the way it does, especially when it comes to like you know coverage in general, you know 
we've always been asked questions on why certain things go the way they do where certain outlets get something and mm-hmm. i know a lot of that has to do with money but sometimes you'll be seeing like oh you know websites are going to get two days of exclusive access than influencers and i just want to understand i want them to explain to me why they do that shit. <laughs> uh logan is anyone you in particular you'd like to interview um not not particularly not not that i can think of obviously it you know, you'd have Phil Spencer would probably be like the biggest one, but I'm not really big into the whole like interviewing people. <laughs> so I, I mean, like to interview I, Todd Howard too. Oh yeah, Todd Howard seems like a he's like, a good talk. Like just just make good games and give them to me so I can play them. That's all I really care about. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I used to do interviews a lot on early early days of playing Xbox and early days of like uh, the podcast I used to do prior to playing Xbox. Uh, I used to do a lot of independent developer interviews. Those were really fun. Um, had a few uh, big breaks in between um, and then sort of just kind of fell off the wagon. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always open to it. BG Stupid JK. That's that's the name. It says BG Stupid JK. <laughs> uh, he says, what one game would you like to be revived just one last time as an Xbox exclusive? For me, it would be Blinks the Time Sweeper. 3D platformers are a huge risk but I think it would be a cute callback to such an obscure game. Okay. I would like, I, I've said this a couple of times in the past, mm-hmm. but I'm a big fan to get a company like, like compulsion to remake um, the army of two franchise compulsion and army of two. That's two I different compulsion uh, oh, coalition a, coalition. Gotcha. Coalition. <laughs> yeah, I feel like their bread, like the way they make games would, would highlight that franchise so much. Like mm-hmm. I think they could make that just as popular as like a Gears because that game, like obviously don't do it exactly the way that game was built, mm-hmm. but take that Gears foundation, mm-hmm. retune it and and rebuild that Army of Two franchise up. Okay. You Logan? Um, the, the, I'm trying to think of the question. Did he say Xbox only or just in general? He said, <laughs> he's, he, he pretty much highlighted Xbox. He says, he says, uh, what one game would you like to be revived just one last time as an Xbox exclusive? So it could be any game, oh. I guess, just as an Xbox exclusive. <laughs> I mean, like, so there's this there's this one game, but it it, it, would, want it, it wouldn't be an Xbox exclusive, if anything. It'd be a PlayStation game, but it's, but it's one of my childhood franchises that I absolutely loved and would love to see it revived because it's been dormant for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's it's not. I'm gonna deter from the whole Xbox thing um, because I can't really think off the top of my head uh, what I'd want as an Xbox exclusive. And so this is weird being Planet Xbox, but um, the Getaway is okay. is mine. the The Getaway on the PlayStation Two. I loved the first one. I loved Black Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a very gritty like. It was way above, like I think, way ahead of its time in the in the the combat, and it was one of the first games that didn't have like a HUD element to it. Mm-hmm. And there was just so many aspects of it. And I loved how gritty and um, mature that game was, and it's kind of weird because that was two thousand and three, I think two thousand two, mm-hmm. somewhere around that. Yep. So it's like a twenty year old game. Um, so I was like thirteen at the time of playing it. I don't know if they, <laughs> what what that really says. Um, but like I just love that franchise and I miss it and I wish that uh, somebody would bring it back and I'd honestly I'd be 100% okay with like a, a, a remake of the first one because mm-hmm. um, I enjoyed that story so much but but yeah that'd be my pick I know it's not an Xbox um, game but it's a franchise that has always sat in the back of my head um, for 20 plus years and I still think about that game uh, and franchise today. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably one of the only games I went from PlayStation that I want um, to come back or remade. It was my favorite uh, uh, PlayStation uh, game back then, um, The Getaway. Cause it was the again, you know, that came out at a time where if, if you ain't if you weren't playing GTA, you ain't gaming, right? Um, but I was playing Getaway. Everybody was playing like I think Vice City, maybe it was. Um, 
And I was trying to get people on the ghetto. I was like, yo, the graphics are so much better. The only thing is that people didn't like because it took place in like fucking London and they stayed, they they spoke with accents and the stuff like See, that. That's but the thing. Like I yeah. I love the I love the yeah, fact yeah. that it took place in London because like you didn't at that time and even still today you don't have that very many games. Yeah, that you don't. Place in London, you right? Yeah, you just don't. But I loved like the 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 no HUD element. Yep. I loved like the fact that like the way when you did like the shooting and stuff. Yep. It, it, there was no crosshairs. You had to like look at where your pistol was pointing or your your uh, a. I think it had like an AK or shotgun. I, I forget all the weapons that was in there, but you had to actually like look at where it was like pointing. You know, there was no yeah. crosshairs. Yeah, you had a, a lock on mechanic too that would help out there um, with shooting. But then like I also liked the the whole ability like to heal yourself, right? Yeah. Um, you had to like rest up on the wall and yep. like wait yep. for like yep. the blood pool. Yeah. And like I just was like when I played that, I just thought it was like one of the most like engrossing games at the time because like there was no bullshit, right? Yeah. You had it was it wasn't an open world. Like it yeah, there was a free play, but there was nothing to do in the free play. Yeah. Um and you had the like there was no map. Right. So yep. when you was going through and driving through the city, you had to be reliant on like watching the turn signals. Yeah. And that would tell you yes, how to get to like that's your, true. I was yeah. like, that shit was so sick at that time. Yeah. Like that it was just like like just amazing. I just remember I, I would play free play. Yeah. Um after I beat the campaign, I would just drive around that city and just like yeah. cause havoc and just go around and like shoot people and get and go into chases and stuff. But like it was such it was such a good franchise. And it's it's so sad that like PlayStation's just sitting on it and it's just dormant, not getting anything done to it. <laughs> yeah, so sad. Um, if I had to pick one, all right. So I had a, this is tough, right? So I'm, I mean, if it was the Xbox exclusive, great. Um, but I'm not. I I want two types of games. For one, for Xbox games, I'm a big fan of Cameo. I would love to see that game revitalized. I think that it was a great idea at the time um it's like we don't get enough of like your the platforming games and, and i don't even know if i would consider cameo a platformer but it's that it was a awesome fantasy game with cool elements um and it had a deep a deep story uh to a degree um and i enjoyed the concept i enjoyed the boss fights the whole rescuing like family members out of bosses which that part is often stolen uh, or, or reused in other video games. Um, so cameo elements of power or, and just for like just the standard action games that I miss, uh, like, uh, John Woo string hold and dead to rights. I would love for that to come back. And like I said, if I get that as an exclusive, great, but like, those are like my favorite type of like games. It's just a standard action game where that has, that has a, you know, a beginning and ending and a decent story. Uh, you know, dead, uh, a game like dead to rights, or a game like John Woo Stranglehold, where it's just nonstop chaotic action that slowed that classic Matrix <laughs> slow down bullet time. What they do when you're jumping in midair to shoot, and um, I was a big fan of games like that uh, back in the early 2000s. Um, so shout out to BG Stupid JK. Uh, that was a good question. Meridian says. What would you like to see id software make on work on next? I love their creature and in environmental design. Seeing them tackle on an RPG game would be cool, but Xbox has shit ton of RPGs in the works. Curious to see what you guys want from the next id game. Um what I want is not going to be too much of a surprise. I want I want Quick 4 uh, remade I want or Quake or just another Quake game or single player based Quake game. Uh, Quake yeah. is a little bit more grounded than what Doom is. I know Doom is cool and, and whatnot, and people like it, but I I more so like enjoy you no know, Quake. Um, so if I can get Quake Four and and I would play Quake Four today. The reason why I'm not playing Quake Four right now on PC is because it's it's, it's, it's it doesn't support controller, um, and it doesn't support. I don't think it supports uh, achievements. Uh, but it doesn't so I can pl I have to only play with a keyboard and mouse, and that's proven very difficult for me. Um, so if they find a way to make that thing backwards compatible, or they want to elect to remake Quake Four or remake a single player based Quake game, I that's what I want it to do. 
I saw that uh, there was ratings for uh, the Quake Two remake. Yeah, but um, I think because that, that well, I'm just saying like obviously it's not Quake Four, but uh, I mean maybe they might be working their way to doing something like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll see some more announcements at what is it? Uh, the Quake On, Quake 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 On, yeah, yeah. I think the yeah, only I mean, reason know. only reason why I'm not like super hype about that because I think it's going to be what the other Quake was. Remember how they uh, just re-released uh, the classic Quake? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying yeah. is, I'm saying is like, yeah, obviously it's not right now Quake yeah. Four, but it could be something like leading up, right? Yeah. I mean, that should because they did bring the first Quake. Um, uh, I think it was like a couple years ago. I want to say, yeah, it wasn't yeah, it was like year. it was like almost right after ago. the acquisition, dude. It was like, in yeah, like, yeah, so like they brought that. So, I mean, there, there's a possibility that they could be maybe working their way through them and mm-hmm. uh, or possibly making a new game in that franchise, too, right? If they if they do it, and since that's already been leaked that there's ratings for Quake 2, I mean, obviously, there's something still going on and some still talks, yep. uh, with the remake of, of Quake somewhere in that vicinity. Okay, Attic. Mine, mine would be actually not ever going to happen, mm-hmm. but I think that's the point of the question. Yep, is uh, I would actually like them and three four three make a a Master Chief and Doom Guy collaboration game. Mm-hmm. Okay, like a Halo and Doom, uh, like collab- like Master Chief lands on that planet mm-hmm. and he gets stuck on it and him and doom guy have to like fight their way through all kinds of demons and shit okay I imagine like master chief getting just owned by these demons because he's ever fought them and doom guy got to explain how to like fight the certain demons <laughs> and do the glory kills on yeah him. <laughs> and, and like the first time you come across doom you have to fight him oh oh yeah that would I could see um, a cross game like that happening. You know what game I always uh, dreamed of happening, which I thought could be possible since they're they're taking place on you know different planets, like um, mm-hmm. Master Chief landing on like Planet Sierra, and um, yeah, I think that would be cool too. I think I, I could see that being a thing. I think it's it's a more of a situation that he can handle. Uh, but like yeah, I think I think it just depends if the demons can penetrate his arm. Yeah. I don't know if they could or not. Yeah. Um all right, all right. That's a good question for uh, from Meridian. Uh my truck nuts. Wow. It says shout out to Kiss Move. <laughs> it. Been watching you and your hairline degrade since 2015. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm man, due man. for a haircut, man. Oh my god. Okay. That was a all right. Hashtag best buy. Was that his question? That's what yeah, that's what he posted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a question, man. That's oh, just man. a burn. What the fuck? <laughs> Arachi Maru 45 says, would you rather five hundred thousand dollars right now or a dinner with Phil Dominus and Maximus Aurelius Spencer? Uh, oh my god. Five hundred thousand dollars. Give me five hundred thousand dollars. Phil ain't gonna do nothing for like, me. I, I don't even like you know, I, I know on like ILP, it's important he gets on the show, but like I'm not even interested in interviewing people. Like, uh, like I, I here's the thing: like I don't mind if we ever interviewed Phil Spencer. Obviously, all for it. I want to interview people these days that's like going to explain to me how like game production works and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you just get a lot of PR speak from a lot of these executives. Yeah, like I, I, I'm to the point where I don't want to interview more people actually making the games. Yeah, I mean, five hundred thousand dollars is a lot. It's a, it's a change. I'm pretty sure for five hundred thousand dollars, I, I can pay somebody uh, to get me access to Phil Spencer if I wanted to interview him that bad. Uh, Easily. So, um, you get the best of both worlds that way. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, shout out to you know everybody on Patreon uh, for the questions. Your questions were awesome, and. Uh, we are, uh, you know, you know, very thankful for your support and contributions. Let's uh, get into the podcast. So, um, couple things going on. Uh, Xbox raising the price of the Xbox Series X and uh, the Game Pass. So, Series X, I think, is taking place in other countries. Uh, I think they mentioned it, you know, being more in line with the price of the PlayStation Five. Uh, U.S. in uh, starting in August in the U.S. Game Pass goes from what nine ninety nine to ten ninety nine, so one dollar, and then Game Pass Ultimate is going from fourteen ninety nine 
to $16.99. So by $2 uh, here in the uh, US, you know, this obviously was met with uh, criticism, um, you know, some videos, some tweets and stuff like that. Um, I'm I'm obviously obviously I'm gonna let you guys get your thoughts on I think Attic you might even put out a video I think you have right on this. Yeah, it gets a lot of hate too. Yeah. I, I, the thing I don't like about like the community in general, mm -hmm. it's like I feel like neither like it's on both sides. Like if if you have a a mainly Xbox community following you, like any crit crit like any criticism, a lot of people just won't click the video. Like it doesn't matter what I say. Mm -hmm. It's just the title is is what it is, and they just don't want to mess with it. <clears throat> I I think um so a lot some people you know I see Nick and other people were like super critical of this. All right, and then one of the highlights was that oh when PlayStation increased prices of PlayStation, oh you guys talked about it, but no Xbox do it. It's uh it's crickets and all this other stuff and. And I, I'll be brutally honest. Um, I was like, the timing is bad. There's there's too much stuff going on that's overshadowing the news to make it uh, less of a big deal. And then the price increase to Game Pass is like, um, is very minimal. And then the fact that, for example, when we raise when they raise the price of uh, AAA games from sixty to seventy, you no know, PlayStation along with Activision and, and Take Two were their first publishers to do it so you know it took xbox what three years to adopt the pricing so and and within that three-year span every other publisher were starting to adopt the pricing you know outside of like i think sega and capcom um and so microsoft didn't adopt that pricing until uh this year so it's like i was gonna i was gonna i was gonna i, was gonna, <laughs> I don't mean to be a dick yeah. but that's because they didn't put out any triple a games last year like no, they put they put out triple A's uh, all throughout 2021. They were uh, they put out they, only, they put out yeah, yeah, but so like what I'm saying is there was a year gap there where they didn't put anything out triple A. So I'd almost say it was like a like a, I don't know. Uh, okay, so it could have happened sooner if they. That's what I was, I was just a observation. <laughs> no, that's all right. Anything big I think it was a combination between lack of good marketing deals, lack of triple A, mm -hmm. and just lack of um the uh, units itself because i know there for a while it was hard to find any of the consoles at the beginning of last year yeah um so so got that that happened and then obviously playstation was the first to you know start raising the price of their console so by the time the xbox is doing this stuff it's like it's already been done the shock the shock value is gone the industry has already moved and trended in that direction. We've done seen other devices do it. So it's not to say that, oh, it's right, it's good that Xbox is doing it. At this point, it's just like, eh, it is what it is. PlayStation, you guys conditioned us because when we were critical of PlayStation of doing this, you, we were wrong for criticizing it, and you guys conditioned us to make it like, all right, this is okay. This is when you're when you're when you put out good products and you have exclusive bangers, you should be allowed to do this stuff. So. Cool. So that's what happened. So the Game Pass, we all know Game Pass was going to go up at some point. You know what I mean? It's we we all have like all these different subscriptions: Hulu, Netflix, uh, Disney, whatever, and they all have increased increased at some point, maybe multiple times in the last few years. This is Xbox's first increase uh, for the Game Pass since inception. So this is this has been what 2017 till and you finally get an increase in uh 2023 and now, i mean i prefer not to the increase is small it's a, it's a cheaper increase than what it, what netflix has done um and uh i guess i really don't have the energy to really criticize it because at this point it's just part of the business and i know a lot of people really don't want to hear that but i've been conditioned to except that prices are going to increase across the board on certain things i don't like to see that console prices increase because it doesn't make sense because the older a console is the less it should cost right so i have more pushback on that and that's another reason why i don't want to see another i don't want to see a mid-gen refresh if they still can't they can't even have do a proper price markdown on these consoles uh well when are we when will we have time to do a console refresh which will either have to be either on the same price of these consoles or more so yeah i'm, I'm not really uh buying it but 
Yeah, man, I, I'm just kind of to the point where I really don't care. And I didn't really care to put out a video or even comment on it because it just at that point in time, it just wasn't the biggest news. I mean, it's one of those scenarios where it's like, you know, especially coming from my perspective where I feel mm -hmm. like sometimes people kind of want to like bully you into making the content they want you to make. Absolutely. Happens all the time. And it's just like, you're not going to, the only person going to bully me to making the content me is me. So it, it, it's it, you got to make what you like to make, man. And, and sometimes I feel like people be so much into this console war stuff that, you know, I would pe literally have people unsub to my channel just because I say Xbox, you needed to be more, you need to be more aggressive in the Japanese market. Well, Addict doesn't sell that. No one gives a, no one gives a fuck. Okay. Like no one cares and, and I get it. It doesn't sell well, but I care. I play these games and I'd be damned if some random picture on the internet is going to, is going to bully me into not making those videos. No, oh, absolutely. That, that happens. Putting um, you smooth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it happens. Uh, people, you know, it happens in the comments. It happens in even tweet. I get, you know, people want to bully me into tweeting about something or making a video about something. Oh, I don't hear you talk about this. Oh, like, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't, feel like it's not it's that's not my prerogative like you know what i mean i don't it's if i'm going to react to something it's because i if i is because i want to right but um again it's like it's a it's a non-factor to me personally um what about you um logan um i mean the only thing is kind of weird is that phil did come out and say that the activision blizzard uh buy and wouldn't increase the prices of game pass um so i think that's a little bit interesting that they that they <laughs> put out the price increase technically before that they can buy it um so that they so phil could kind of stick true to his word and say that i mean if they do buy activision blizzard and then they you know they don't rise you know game pass prices for another four to five years i mean technically he is right because they didn't uh raise the prices yeah beforehand but it's just kind of funny that they did it now um so i guess that's just kind of funny wordplay uh me honestly i don't I mean, like you said uh i don't really care about the the playstation when it raises prices because one it didn't affect me i already owned a playstation 5 mm -hmm. um same with xbox i already own an xbox the only thing is like you said you know what does that mean for if they do do a mid-gen refresh or what the, this is interesting that this is i think the first console generation that we've seen where the prices have increased of the consoles. Um, yeah, we they, saw they, they, with, um, with the Oculus too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then see if you notice, like the Oculus, now that they announced the Oculus Quest 3, they lowered the price, uh, they're, or they're going to be lowering it back to what the original price was of the Oculus Quest 2. Um, so that's weird that they went up and then are now going to go back down uh, to line up for the Quest 3. Um, so that's the weirdest part i think about it is that usually these consoles are they get discounted you know because it's supposed to be the technology becomes uh cheaper to make easier to manufacture stuff like that so for us to not have that and it go the opposite direction is just weird yeah. right um that's the first time because I, I worked way back when i actually worked at you know at a GameStop and at a game store and and it happened all the time that consoles would go and drop prices right um, that was like the first time I bought my 360 was when it when it dropped 50 bucks. You know, it was the first time that dropped, you know, that that much money. And so, like, that's when I picked up. So for them to go the opposite direction is just weird. I don't I don't understand why or what's the it's driving like they factor. They raise it. it just so when they start putting shit on sale, it looks good, but really <laughs> they're just putting it to what it originally was priced. And, Those are not losing and yeah, and and that's what and that's what I'm getting with like with the Oculus, right? They they were at the one price, then they went up a hundred dollars, and now they're going back down a hundred dollars to kind of give you that illusion that hey, you're getting a good deal now. Um, so that that's just it's just weird. I mean, that's all. Is it going to affect me as a consumer? No. So I'm not going to whine and cry about it um, because it it just doesn't. But it's just more alarming of what the future is going to be. Yeah. Um, and Game Pass. Game Pass, it was only what, two dollar. I think for Ultimate, it's a two dollar increase, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it went from fourteen ninety nine to sixteen ninety nine. Yeah. Um, that I'm not. It's just you got to make sure you bring. Just 
if you're going to increase the price of Game Pass, I need your first party games to be good and to be hitting like hard. Like that's just really it. Like the, they need to it's not, at know. this point, man. It's not even like like a good thing. Like show me something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so like if you're like, gonna yeah if you're gonna raise the price on Game Pass when you've given us kind of crumbs for you know at least 2022 and i'm sorry i don't consider redfall a win in game pass this year at all um and you're going to raise that price you you better start putting out high quality games on that service Uh, it's just that's all it is um but obviously i'm not going to go and cancel my game pass right away or do anything absurd like that it's just not who i am i still find value in the service it's just if you're going to up the price to it it up the the value as well right don't just I, don't just up the price just to get more money out of me i personally feel like this is just bad timing it's like you finally starting to get a little bit of what's what i'm looking for a little bit of good publicity people are starting to really yeah. get behind your brand from what happened uh at the show this year and it's like and then like a month later you like, you know what we're getting this good publicity Fuck it, raise it. It's like what? <laughs> like I, I get even if this was like the plan because they 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 have these plans for a duration amount of time before it actually happens. Yeah, it's I not would, like they if, just did this, right? It's if I was like... Phil, I would have went back to them like, I'm gonna need you guys to push that like it like a year. Like can, can we do this? And maybe he did. And he, you know, when it comes to that corporate ladder, that corporate policy, uh, you know, po- uh, gaming politics, maybe he lost that. But it's just like man. You had such good momentum. And I don't think like they destroy their momentum of anything. But it's just like you should do whatever you can to stay out of negative article headlines right now. And you should really captivate at least till after Starfield. Now let's be real. The reason they did this is because they want the increased cost with Starfield. But it's just like you gotta prove you're making content to that degree. Before you just go out there. Now, Starfield would have been a hit. And then they, and then they start doing that with the next game, Avowed. Yo, Avowed's going to be great, man. We want extra money. Okay, people would be more willing. People would be more accepting. We just played maybe a game of the generation, Starfield. I can, I can get behind giving you guys a little bit more money. But we just got off a of Redfall. And you want more money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough. Fair enough. Absolutely. Um, so a couple things has been coming out of this, uh, <laughs> FTC hearing, um, you know, the topic point here, I know, uh, the, the, the trend is you no know, Xbox has lost the console war. Uh, but one of the things on day one of these hearings is that we learned that, uh, machine games in the end of Jones is in fact, Xbox and PC exclusive, and it is coming off of an agreement that they had with Disney, but does it had an agreement with, you know, Disney um, for the game, which was originally intended to be multi-platform after X- X- Xbox walked in there and ripped up the culture. <laughs> Xbox had uh, once the acquisition closed, Xbox um, uh, amended the agreement um, and, you know, they renegotiated and Disney appeared was OK with them putting it a day one in Game Pass and making it uh exclusive to xbox and pc the ftc questioned uh phil spencer on this decision and i thought his uh you know response was pretty credible you know you know obviously the original talk was to include game pass and the fact that they made it exclusive because disney has an agreement with playstation for spider-man and now wolverine to be exclusive playstation so it was only right that xbox gets a disney ip as an exclusive and i ain't mad at it so it was a question that all of us had we all inquired about it like hey chances are indiana jones is a uh, multi plat i just want to know uh your thoughts on this uh new uh uh information in regards to this uh to indiana jones let me say something real quick because i'm I, I know i'm gonna eat i haven't ate nothing all day my yeah. bad so i'm gonna say my piece first off i want to say it's crazy they've had this information this whole time and they've never came out and said it like this is a big deal and, and the way that it was worded is this has been this way since pretty much they bought bethesda mm-hmm. they renegotiated and redid the contract so 
They didn't do that with Deathloop. They didn't do that with Ghostwire Tokyo. Because obviously that would probably cost more money. But man, they made sure Indiana Jones and they made sure his <laughs> punk ass stayed over there on <laughs> Xbox. It, it, it's just, I feel like this this is something that Microsoft needed. I, I, I can't begin to tell you how many people were convinced this game was a multi-plat. Even myself. And I had people tell me it was exclusive, but it was even people that I trust. I was like, you, you bugging. You just, you just guessing. But the fact that Pete Hines came up there and was like, it's, it's an exclusive dog. Like, how is that kind of information going to go out? And now imagine this. They do Indiana Jones at that last showcase. And it says at the end, exclusively on Xbox. That would have been a good motion. Yeah. But it's just like, how are you going to let some probably some of the biggest news come out in an FTC courtroom? <laughs> but that's the thing. The same thing with the Epic versus Apple. Like, you know, we found out the news that, you know, they were really looking to get Game Pass on Nintendo Switch that came out in the Epic versus Apple case. It's like, it's a lot of sensitive information has come out. Like, we're probably going to find out Xbox's, you know, numbers um, that, uh, definitely like these things are going to come out and and i think that's why probably some of the announcements that they make come out is because like well it's probably going to come out in this case so we should probably you know get in front of it right so uh it's yeah i wish they because when they first i only thing we can go off is when they first announced the indiana jones with the little trailer and stuff like that we know obviously but as zenimax and even xbox retweeted the trailer playstation did not so that was the only clue that I had that chances are it could be exclusive, but chances are because we know it's case by case. And it, this was clearly a deal they struck with Disney prior to closing the deal because the announcement was just too soon. I think the announcement came in like January of 2021 and um, they closed the deal in March of 2021, but they announced the acquisition in September of 2020. So um, Logan, thoughts on the Indiana Jones? Um, I don't know. Maybe if I'm just, I thought it was be an, an xbox exclusive so so for them to like come out and announce it i was just i i, I didn't really have any reaction to it because mm-hmm. the reaction that i would have to it was i thought this was already known um i didn't really have any thought process that led me to think that it wouldn't be mm-hmm. um an xbox exclusive so i guess i'm just it's more so confirmed now but i mean like i said I, i'm not like hyped for anything because I don't, I don't know what anything the game looks like yeah Right, we haven't seen anything about it. I know Machine Games does pretty fantastic work, so I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah. But as far as like the game itself, I mean, we don't we don't have anything other than whatever the title announcement was uh, shown to us. So it's like, what is there really to be hyped for? Like, there's we don't know anything about the game. <laughs> like, so that that's kind of where I'm sitting. It's like until you actually show me what the what the game's gonna be and how it's gonna play. Um, I, I mean. I just, it's more like a wait and see for me. Yeah, understandable. We also learned, um, I think this is during when Sarah Bond was on the um, stand that uh, Call of Duty was, uh, Xbox was at risk of losing Call of Duty on this platform, which forced them, forced Microsoft to renegotiate a revenue share of 80-20 rather than uh, the normal 70-30 split. And this was, you know, due off to the, know the relationship and establishments and uh what they were able to achieve with playstation which sort of forced xbox hand um in this case and could you guys imagine a situation where call of duty doesn't exist on xbox so whatever they that's where you bend the knee they had literally had to bend the knee uh, in the words of iron luke Paga, they had to bend the knee to not lose call of duty as a just a releasing on xbox any thoughts on that revelation that came out um I guess I'd be more interested to know what what is the cause of that. Why 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 were they at risk of losing Call of Duty at all? Um, is it because like what what is that reason? Did they talk about that reason at all? Like in this or or why they had to do this split? Like so like that, that's what I want to know. Why 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 was because because you gotta think back when. The 360 and and PS3 days, like Call of Duty, was huge on on Xbox. You would you would 
it had uh, the 30 30 day early access mm-hmm. to all the map packs for mm-hmm. uh, extended period of time um and then just kind of once the obviously the xbox one and ps4 generation come out everything drastically shifted from the xbox side to the playstation side and it's been that way since i want to say what was what was the first big call of duty game that had a marketing deal i think it was what what was after advanced warfare was i think it was black ops black ops 3 i think it was that the one that took off with playstation yeah might have had like yeah i want to say something like that so i mean you're looking at that like it's been that way for almost eight eight years seven years something like that um Mm -hmm. so it's kind of weird that they would have you know from it going from one of the biggest franchises i would say on the xbox 360 to now that they got to negotiate uh revenue deals to to even get activision to put the game on their platform yeah um shows that there was a huge drastic change in xbox as a whole um and I'm, I'm just interested to know what that drastic change exactly is is it because they have obviously they sell less consoles um is, is it because of that is it like what is that driving factor that made activision be like hey we're not going to put call of duty on your platform unless you give us more money like well, what was that that's that's what i want to know yeah i mean i think that was the Revenue. I think what happened was maybe PlayStation negotiated a revenue split that was, you know, also favor uh, in favor of Activision, which I think gave them the eighty twenty um, as well. And that at that point, you forcing Microsoft in because it's like, all right, if I'm going to take a seventy twenty, I know I'm going to sell whatever I'm going to sell on, you know, PlayStation. And then obviously, it probably allowed them was what really allowed them to put the games back on Steam is because you, I think, automatically get like eighty twenty on Steam or. Um, and then uh, Xbox essentially was this with the standard revenue split. It was like, if you don't agree to this, we would just, you know, take the game off the, you know, the platform. And this was uh, and this was for when they were launching a Series X and S and PS5. So it was going to take place to start. So the first Call of Duty they would have lost would have been uh, Cold War. Yeah, Cold uh, War. So that's crazy. Yeah. So they had to pivot and and, and do that. And I think. <laughs> obviously that's what I'm saying that that seems so so drastic right like yeah. that's insane to like hear that there'd be a, there was a potential of a you know like Activision literally and but like the thing is that's, that's so crazy because now Activision's fighting for this to be bought by Xbox but yeah. yet yet just a couple years ago they were like hey we're not call of duty on your platform that to me is fucking insane to hear that that they were just about to pull that game from the platform but then they're they're here wanting to be bought by the company that they were going to potentially stop doing business with because of the revenue split i think it just might be something simple that you know we might not think they saw microsoft as a big paycheck and it's like look microsoft's kind of in a bad position let's extort some money from them like uh, well, they're about they're, they're trying to extort almost seventy billion dollars from them. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, like <laughs> well, I mean, that's just that's, that's just insane. That, that's so, just the, the thing is, if you know Microsoft can pay it, and you yeah. know Microsoft's in a bad part, bad place in the industry at currently at that time, and they still are to a point. It's like give them an ultimatum: you pay us more money, or we're taking our ball and going home. Uh, I, I don't think PlayStation most likely is not paying that because they have the install base. So they have, because at that point, Sony had more leverage in those arguments yeah, than, they did. than Activision would. They did. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't have to, Microsoft no longer has the marketing deal. And when they asked them, do they want to bid on the marketing deal? Microsoft said, no, that probably pissed them off too. <laughs> so it's just like, look, you ain't going to give that's us what, extra money. That's what I'm You're saying. Not- it sounds like Xbox is just shooting themselves in the foot here with these deals after deals. Yeah, like, but when they, I feel like when these games are, when they put themselves in a position where they're going to be skipping the platform or their uh, major games are going to be skipping the platform, I think that it, what it does is it forces Xbox to make some sort of power move. And, you know, we also got that confirmation. Uh, I know it was long rumored that PlayStation was looking to make Starfield 
uh, an exclusive along with Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop. And Phil Spencer confor- confirmed during this case that, yeah, they were trying, they were negotiating for Starfield where Xbox wouldn't have access to Starfield. So that prompted them literally to buy the <laughs> <laughs> Biden's in the back. It's like, all right, fuck that. <laughs> You're like, now, if that has to happen, because in that case, and I, and I know I'm overshooting myself, I'd be that literally puts Sega and Square Enix in a position to be bought because of these deals. Because those are the other two publishers that PlayStation tends to buy out um, that they pay. Microsoft <laughs> already tried to buy Square Enix once. Uh, yeah, but I think, but for good reason. The thing is, is that. When play, if PlayStation keeps buying out these big games where that prevents Xbox from getting access from it, the only way Xbox can literally get access to the game is for them to buy the publisher. They were at risk of losing access to Starfield. They bought the Zenimax. They were in a position where they could have lost Call of Duty. And, uh, now they're trying to buy. So it's like, fuck that revenue split. <laughs> we, we're going to buy it. You know what I mean? Uh, fuck a marketing deal. We're going to, we're just going to buy it. <laughs> and, and yeah, what's funny <laughs> is, uh, PlayStation tried to took Starfield away from Xbox, and not only did PlayStation did Xbox take Starfield away from PlayStation, they're gonna take Elder <laughs> Scrolls away from them. They're gonna take whatever Dishonored new or Deathloop away from yeah. them. It's like you know, in the end of the day, like the biggest thing that Phil Spencer confirmed there is like we didn't start this; we're finishing it. Now, as far as like their games, that's debatable. We got to see what that is, but mm-hmm. you know when when your competition is going out there and they have the connections and they have the free reign, especially since they're a Japanese company, they have more options in the Japanese market Mm -hmm. and the Asian market. Like sometimes you got to go out there and you can't just like, you know, slide a hand stuff. Like Microsoft got to the point. They're like, we drop in fucking nukes. We done. Yeah. That's when they bought Bethesda. That's when they bought those five studios. It's like, you know, Phil Spencer was right. You know, we was already in a bad position. We cannot afford to imagine this year Starfield is coming out to PlayStation exclusively. Yeah, it, it, that would hurt. They would have like they made Fantasy. the right decision. They, they would have Final right Fantasy, uh, Spider Man, and Starfield, and Xbox would have just had Redfall and Forza. <laughs> no, they would have Redfall. No, they, they wouldn't have, have they, they wouldn't have Redfall. Yeah, you're right. So it was just like, oh damn, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts just thinking about it. But um, but assuming, but to be fair, if Xbox didn't acquire Zenimax and stuff like that, I think they would have acquired somebody, another, and they probably would have acquired Ubisoft at that point in time. Um, I think, uh, and a lot of people, the thing I don't like about this court case uh, between the FTC and Microsoft, because it seems like the when you listen to it now, I only got to listen to day two. Um, I don't think I'll be able to listen to the rest of the case because of um, I've worked, but it just worked out so I could hear her day two. But it, the FTC lawyer, like this whole entire time, if you didn't, if you didn't know what you were listening to, you would think you it was a case versus Xbox and PlayStation, in that you know the lawyer was representing just exclusively PlayStation. None of the questions, you know, were based upon how the deal could impact consumers or. Um, even Is other competitors. It, the only questions were focusing on how the deal impacts PlayStation. And it, it just seemed very weird and creepy. It's just like, I was like, wait a minute. I keep forgetting like, oh, this is the FTC's case or is this this PlayStation case? Because they, they're not considering anybody else or like they're not considering any of that. Um, and they bring up Google once though? They yeah, bought Google in as the last minute who did not help their case at all. All Google did was prove that cloud is in the same uh, that Stadia was in the same market as PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. And the sad part about this whole thing is, even though that we're looking at this and we're we're educated when it comes to the majority of the stuff mm-hmm. in the gaming industry for the most part, and we're just like, there's no way the FTC wins this shit. But this isn't politics, <laughs> yo, <laughs> like, Logan. Like, we don't know how high the lobbyists go, like. <laughs> What what was one of my uh, early days of playing Xbox? One of my biggest complaints. Uh, which which Xbox Studio I can't stand the most? What Xbox Studio you can't stand the most? Yep. Fuck, I don't know. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, Mo Yang, Mo Yang, and oh, oh, and, and, yeah, and okay, Minecraft yeah, yeah, yeah. because they have they don't support anything like consoles or anything. Minecraft. The base Minecraft game we got today is it, the same 
that it was since whenever fuck Minecraft came out, right? That's not really true, but I get what no, you're they, saying. No, they've done updates. They haven't they've done, done no. drastic updates. Uh, my, I mean, my brother yeah, plays those all the time. No, I'm not talking about drastic. content updates. I'm talking about like the actual technical updates. Like the game, like, oh. so what happened was, uh, so the FTC, because they tried to get Xbox for not supporting uh, a PS5 version of Minecraft. And I'm like, nigga, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I was like, they didn't have, they didn't even do an Xbox series version of Minecraft. Why are they asking about this? Like, so they were like, yeah, um, you, you, yeah, you say Minecraft, but the, you guys did not, you, why aren't you supporting the PlayStation 5 with Minecraft? And he was like, well, there is a Minecraft playable, Minecraft is playable on the PlayStation 5, it's just the PS4 version, and that's because Sony didn't trust us, so they didn't give us development kits to up optimize it for Minecraft. So there is no optimized version of Minecraft for the PS5. And I'm like, bro, Phil Spencer, let them know you guys have any optimized Minecraft for the Xbox Series X. So it's not like Xbox has an advantage in this case. They're playing the same shitty old Minecraft, right? And but he was able to throw out the fact that hey, we got Minecraft Dungeons and PS Plus, and we got Minecraft Legends Day and Date, like that came out in April. So it, that was like the, the 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 one of the coolest parts of the case is that they have all these examples of games that they are providing PlayStation and whatnot and being and acting as a you know a, a publisher on a platform and having existing deals. It's just like the FTC's case, uh, their argument throughout this whole entire thing is try to prove that that oh that they're going to foreclose, they're going to try to foreclose you because, because all the, they want they keep using the Zenimax deal against them. Um, in a case against Call of Duty, but they, but they want to ignore what they've done with Minecraft, so, uh, the Minecraft games and uh, Elder Scrolls Online games. Do you, do you guys think? Because uh, I've been told that you know Microsoft be thinking that they're that this is going to get past with no consolidations, um, besides the ones that they've already honored. Uh, do you yeah, think yeah, this yeah. gets past if, like crazy no consolidations? If, like yeah. Microsoft's gonna do some like real crazy shit with mm. these games? Like, no, no. I think what happens is is that the thing is if they win this if they win this uh, uh, preliminary injunction case, which they need to, is if they lose, then the deal is pretty much dead. It's wrapped. It's wrapped. So if point. they win this case, there's there's no they don't win with the, they're they're not getting any other concessions or anything like that because they're in a situation where they don't really need concessions at all they only doing the concessions because of the european commission with the cloud thing which is it is what it is because they think they got some sort of like questions there but if playstation and just even though phil spencer swore under oath to release again if playstation don't accept the terms they don't have to put it on there if PlayStation doesn't let them. Now, PlayStation, I do, I'm assuming the Xbox wins the PI. PlayStation's like, all right, let me sign that deal. Um, but if if PlayStation wanted to be spiteful and be like, all right, nah, because uh, we're not going to do it, then that's how play. That's how it doesn't turn out. I think what happens is they win a PI. Call of Duty will be the Minecraft, right? They're going to release Call of Duty regardless. There's no question. It will never be exclusive, right? It will just be in Game Pass. However, all those other Activision games, they're going to be exclusive. Because they are even... They tried... The FTC tried to call into play for Diablo or other Activision games. It was like, objection. Fuck that. <laughs> they, they was like, it's only about Call of Duty. It's only about Call of Duty. And as a, you know... As an Xbox fan, as a fan of the box, of the service and the uh, ecosystem, and I'm seeing that Xbox is trying to buy Activision Blizzard and stuff like that, and the selfishness in me knowing that they're not going to make Call of Duty exclusive for multiple reasons. One, because obviously this is they have a legal battle uh, for it, and two, it it would make the most sense, financial sense, to keep it where it's at because that's how much money you're going to be earning from Valve, uh, PlayStation, Nintendo, and whomever. Um, it, you're just going to be earning a lot of money for them to fund the rest of your uh, projects. Uh, but for games like these, those other games, the Diablos, the Overwatches, uh, the um, the Crash Bandicoots, or anything that they you know uh, decide that they want to release in the next year, I mean, you want those to be you know exclusive. So um, I think uh, the, the case, even though I, I I was completely over it, but the court cases that are going on now it, it is bringing all the juiciness. There was talks that Minecraft Dungeons wouldn't even be uh, uh, on PlayStation. They were going to keep that exclusive, but they eventually um, 
confirmed that you know changed their mind and and, and had it be like a multi-platform um so yeah there's always discussions uh that we're learning that you know what they should make exclusive but um and people you know are upset at the fact and i'm happy i'm happy to hear this because i'm not gonna lie i have tweets literally saying yo if i was an xbox i would cancel all those deals the death loops the ghostwire tokyo and like hell i won't make them exclusive but i'll at least make them release on xbox day and date but in hindsight it was the best thing that they could do because they was like hey we honor this agreement we honor hey we even released them as exclusives because it it it, it looks good in their favor it, it turns around sure they can they can uh I'd, I'd sacrifice a death loop in the ghostwire tokyo so that i could win my argument for indiana jones that's coming out maybe two three years later right it's it, I, now i'm starting to understand and have a better appreciation for them you know honoring some of these sucker deals but in order to close out you no know, better deals thoughts i hear you i think at this point i just i just want all these deals to be done i do too i'm gonna be real with you yeah i'm tired of talking about them all i'm just like come on man like you know at the end of the day too even if this activision goes through it doesn't Mm -hmm. go through it does literally nothing for me i don't care about like none of their games like that i haven't been into call of duty in years should they go on game pass What, what good is that gonna do me i don't care about their games and game pass either now there's like, a lot you, of games you, i'm going to be able to go back you, to and you do would, some campaigns you would have to pay lie. me to play a lot of the activision games so you know i i am excited for like the they got an extensive like library that. though like and i don't own a lot of activision games but a lot of those here's the thing <laughs> i don't mind these games coming to game pass if i felt like there was a chance that they take the initial reception and they invest mm-hmm. into like remaking them making sequels rebooting them but that's up in the air if they do something like that. You yeah. know, I like stuff like Crash Bandicoot. That's yeah. a fun game, fun yeah. concept. It's going to be cool to have those in Game Pass, but it's like, does that do anything going forward? That's up in the air. No, but it would be nice to see, you know, to play a Call of Duty day and date in Game Pass and to see Xbox be able to well, advertise the damn game. and, and, and just Obviously, play. it's a big move. It's yeah. just not a big move for me, like, specifically. No, 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 absolutely not. Like... I I can say I don't even play a whole lot of Activision games, hence why that I, I that's one of the reasons why I would that's benefit why you get from so trouble. I, I don't call it trouble. I really like I don't care what a lot of these like these dudes got to say on the internet. They they get all mad and all in their feelings because they they take my thoughts and opinions personal and they act like I don't have a right to speak. Oh, I agree. Some so, people are weirdos. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, you know, this case continues next week. But look, at the end of the day. By the time we do this podcast next week, this case would be damn near over. It will be over. There will be no more. It might be over. It'll be (laughs) over. We're either going to talk really, really positive (laughs) next week, or we'll be like, damn, they just lost a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So, because next week is July 1st. Do you. Do you think if this doesn't go through, they retaliate in like six months by buying another big publisher? Maybe not as Mm. big as Activision, but someone where the FTC won't be up their ass about? Um, yeah, I think they would. I think they would buy. There's two people in J- Japan. I think buy. they buy. They they continue buying regardless. Yeah, yeah I think if they, it goes through or not. They're, they're, but they're, I think they're if gonna be it better. Doesn't go, if it doesn't go through, they're gonna aim higher. They're gonna be better with their regulator regulations compliance. Believe it or not, it's probably easier for them to buy somebody in Japan um, now um, than it is uh, in America. You know why? Because. J- Japanese FTC got into hot air, and, and what happened is when they got into trouble over the Xbox Sony argument, um, they, they cleared Xbox Activision deal like immediately. I'm almost certain that even after this deal, I think Xbox acquires if they, uh, either a publisher, if they do another publisher, it's going to be a publisher based out of Japan because it's going to be an easier close. They're probably only going to have to go through a couple of jurisdictions. Um, if they buy Sega, they're buying Sega from sammy so that's going to be a different it's not like they're buying out a company they're buying a portion of a company so i think sega would be the easiest one for them to acquire um and i think they're ne- if they're going to buy a publisher it's going to happen in japan because they already got automatic clearance because japan just want to make sure japan wants to show that they're not being biased and that they're like doing their job because they got under fire of that and what did that ha- what happened after that they immediately approved 
Xbox a deal. And I think that opens the door for Xbox to go ahead and acquire whomever's up, who technically is available. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's Sega, if they buying Sega from Sammy, um, then that's a less of a hurdle because you're just buying something for somebody. It's just like an equivalent of, you know, if Microsoft would have gotten to Square Enix before Embracer did to take Crystal Dynamics, it wouldn't have gotten through all this regulatory scrutiny. They would just made the deal called it a day. Um, I think after this, they do go ahead and try to, you know, they do speak to Embracer since Embracer's in trouble. Maybe they strike a deal with Embracer, whether they take um, Crystal Dynamics and uh, Adios Montreal off Embracer's group's hand, or they enter some agreement because Embracer's in trouble because they lost out on a mega deal, right? What if they recoup that, recoup that deal with Microsoft? Mm. Like, I, I think there's something uh, to be said there. There's a, a few other studios that's um, in line that's supposed to be, that's been in like a holding period. Um, but, and I think all that happens regardless of this ABK deal. I think if they lose out on this ABK deal, I think what happens is I think Xbox does get into a, um, a thing where they, I don't think they go after another big publisher, let's say like a EA or something like that, or take two. I don't think that happens think because they'll gobble up a lot of smaller publishers. Yeah. Cause I like, they will still get into the same, you know, issue that they have with, um, Activision, you know, if they bought take two. The issue would be Grant that photo. Well, uh, well Grant that you're gonna withhold the Grant that photo. I think if it doesn't go through, you'll mm-hmm. see. Okay, let's say it does go through. Mm-hmm. Microsoft buys like a Sega, mm-hmm. and then they end it for a while. Yep. If it doesn't go through, Microsoft buys a Sega. Five independent developers mm-hmm. here, an Asian developer here, mm-hmm. a Korean developer here. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like you're gonna see a lot more because here's the thing: if they spend that, that money's gone. But if they don't, Microsoft's just not going to let that and let inflation hit that money. Yeah. They're going to spend it. My, It's not going to be all gaming related. You know, yeah. I, I would expect a bulk of it goes somewhere else. But, you know, they, they're they not going to put that type of money into the gaming field of, of, of Microsoft. And then the moment it doesn't go through, they just take it back. They're like, we're going to we're going to move this money around. Mm-hmm. But here, Phil, he's. He's 10, 15 bill. Go do something with it. If I'm Microsoft, this is going to be a stupid thing and it's mad random. I'm buying Asus if I can. Asus, the PC, uh, the computer company. I, I'd buy them. They already well, did. Why does they go crazy and buy like like a Steam or something? Nah, won't do Won't do it. That's, that's harder to do because you're buying another a store. That's You got more of a case of a monopoly. No, uh, if I'm correctly, Steam's still private. It's private. It'd be easier it, for the... It would be easier for them to buy Steam than it would be Activision. I, but I think they would still get into regulatory trouble. How much do you think Steam is worth? Billions. Yeah, they would still get into trouble because it's a it's a storefront that I yeah it, it, I I don't know like I, I I wouldn't bank on doing that but we'll see we'll see man I, I can't wait for this this thing this conversation to be a thing of the past. Um, you know, you no, know, I think they win um, for the, the PI and then obviously the CMA. We got one more month for the whole CMA thing. But I think if they win this, they should just cl- I think they just close over. And because at the end of the day, CM, the CMA would be the last obstacle. Um, and then at that point, do you think they're going to hold the line if they're if they're if they're uh, their butt buddy FTC loses uh, by if this time? FTC, next week? If the FTC lo- wins their case, I think. I think Microsoft will bend the knee. I, I don't think they'll keep fighting him. No, no, no. If, F- if, if it, FTC wins this, then yeah, Xbox is they're gonna drop the case. But I'm saying if the FTC loses, which I anticipate they do, do you think the CMA is gonna hold the line and try to keep that their whatever case they got on July 28th? Because at that point they're the last line. They're literally the last. It just, line. <laughs> it just depends if if they can reach out to the CMA and be like, look, everyone's closed, but you being difficult and try to like come to another agreement with them or do something then maybe they would close after that but if the cma still had that same energy it, i think they might close but what i've been told is like their financials is there in the same area that cma's in so it's like i don't know if microsoft's gonna play ball with them too hard like what do you mean Apparently, I was told like they're a lot of their financial backing is in the area where the CMA is. Mm. Like a lot of Microsoft's money is in that area. 
Yeah, but CMA doesn't control their money. <laughs> well, it, it, it's not that, but you, you, you don't want, when you have something like that, you don't want to piss off the government because that's what the CMA is. It's, it's a government entity in that area. No, they're, gov they're independent. Oh, the CMA? I don't know yeah, anything about Yeah, they're, they're, like they're independent. So that's why the, I the thought they UK, would be like a lot FTC. of people in the UK government are more supportive of Microsoft. And then, and that's why they, the, the, the cat, that the freaking hearing is happening. The, the, what the hell you call it? The um, appeal is happening quicker than anticipated. Cause they're, they're, yeah, I, that wasn't supposed to happen that quick. And that's why the CMA, every, the thing is with the FTC and CMA, their job, literally what they've been, all they've been doing, they've been trying to force delays so that time can expire and, and the Xbox and ABK just force give up. And that's yeah. why they, these cases are so weak and they're, all they've been doing has been relying on time. And the problem was the U.S. They was like, "Nah, we're gonna do this, whatever." And FTC got scared, so they had to get the the court happened quickly because the Xbox told them, "Like, hey, we're closing on then, June 15th. So that's the only reason why again, we're in court the, now. The CMA might be bluffing, and Microsoft knows too. So, you know, it, it's just weird that they go through with the FTC when the CMA stuff already closed. Like to me, are they gonna go against every country that doesn't like it? Are they just going to shut down all but Blizzard, or can they take Blizzard stuff? Because if they're going to be merged, is it just going to be Blizzard stuff? Like, do they have to pull all of Xbox out of that region? No, like, no I, I think, don't know how. I think like what work, happens but. is what they're going to do is they just close the deal, and and if they, if the CMA decides to fine them, they're going to just take the fine. If they if they can't, well, because the thing is, they have to. They to still have to force your way through stuff. Well, because the thing is, they're, it's easier to do it when you have one obstacle left. Because the thing is, you can say they got one obstacle left. It's like, all right, they can find you, but then there's rules to how much they can really find you. You know what I mean? So, and it will oh, take this a is long money. while. This is yeah. strictly. See, I don't know anything about this. If this is strictly a money scenario, then Microsoft will be fine. Yeah. But it's just like I don't know how much pull the CMA have in that region. Like, I thought they were part of the government because I thought the FTC was part of the American government in some way. So it, it's just like, I thought that they would be able to strong arm Microsoft. Yeah, they, they like Microsoft could strong arm them. Yeah, the FTC is, yeah, it's not really a a government body and stuff like that. It's The thing is, is that that's why the FTC. They just answer to the government? Yeah, they can take it. That's why they, they can get over. Because they ask for public funding. Yeah. So I yeah, assume yeah. they're yeah. part of the government. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got federal get, money. Yeah, they're doing a job uh, for the the country and whatnot, and they they're appointed. They're they're appointed by you know obviously you know people who are in, in power, president. They they they're elected and all that other shit. But the thing is, is that they um they don't have as much power as the CMA. So the, that's why the FTC can't approve deals. They can only block, and then they have to win. They can only um sue, and then they have to win their lawsuit. Um, and that's why they so get make it just straight up say nah, bitch. Yeah, and then, then you have to go through a pill and even the UK uh government, they can't not that they can't reverse, they can make a recommendation and they can force uh the CMA to re to re-review it. Um that's why if Xbox does close over the CMA, they're not gonna be in trouble with the UK government. Uh, they'll be in trouble with the CMA, but then again the CMA can have well, I, I'm referring to more of a... You know how it is in America, because yeah. I don't, I, I don't know the bodies of other stuff. Like <laughs> the CMA, not be not necessarily affiliated with them, mm -hmm. but they got friends. They got people that can put pressure and uh, put pressure on Microsoft. Like when it comes to here, the FTC might not be a hundred percent in the politics, but it doesn't stop motherfuckers from lobbying here. Yeah, yeah, but um. But yeah, man. I'm um, again. By the time we do go, uh, we go live next week. This is gonna be a thing of the past, and you know, and and we'll be talking about something uh, completely different, maybe different reactions because people are gonna lose their mind on the internet. Um, you know, Starfield is still getting coverage right now. And, um, you know, we've learned that ninety, a ten percent of the Starfield universe has life. So ten percent of the planet has life on it. That I'm assuming that's just like natural life, whatever. Um, we also learned that you can romance up to four uh, companions and that there is no land rover vehicles uh, in the in the game. Just want to have uh, anybody have any comments on what we've learned more or learned from Starfield. You can go first, Logan. Um, I mean, I, I don't really see like. 
I mean, it's just all information. I don't know necessarily why people are painting that like in a bad picture. Yep. Um, I, I really don't care if there's no land vehicles or rovers or anything like that. Like I'm fine with exploring on my feet or, or whatever means they give me for travel. Um, the whole 10 per, 10%, I saw people talking negatively about <laughs> the 10% and I, I, you can't really equate that temper. Like there's like a 10% thinking that the other 90% is what nothing. Um, I don't know if that really necessarily equates to that exactly. Um, I don't think it does. Um, but I, I would just have to wait and wait and see. I mean, I'm still obviously excited for Starfield. None of that stuff sounded negative to me. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to be playing a day one, still going to be exploring the, the, the planets um, and seeing. I'm, I've been playing the, the Outer Worlds mm-hmm. uh, recently just to kind of get my space RPG kind of fix and kind of get geared mm-hmm. up for uh, Starfield. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't, there's not every section of that game has life or yeah. inhabitants in it too. So I don't really understand the, the, the negative um, Speaking- aspect that people are trying to attach to that because it's like, wh- what games do you play that have 90% of the world filled with stuff? I mean, yeah. if I look at, but if I look at something just from this year, like when you play Forspoken, like, or spoken them, I would say probably ten percent of those worlds is probably inhabited by by people outside of like the the enemies and stuff that you go and fight in the open world. So I don't I don't I don't I see mean, how it's negative. You look at it just like they said, well, a thousand planets is going to be presumably generated. Yeah, that's what a ten percent is a hundred. Ten percent would be a hundred. So yeah, a hundred planets is going to have life force or some form of of everything you mean to tell me people are complaining like look i get it they're going off of what we have played per, like previously when it comes to generated content and i will say for the most part it's been underwhelming there's been a lot of stuff like that done underwhelming be skeptical that's fine but it's like to say that a hundred planets could potentially have life force life form and, and everything and that's not good enough like that's crazy to think like that amount of space can have some form of missions or you know uh natural habitats like i don't know exactly what they mean it could literally just be like there's a boss there and you fight it uh they maybe could have been a little bit more specific in terms of how that's done but it's just like look like starfield first off let's just talk about generally in the u in the universe we live in we've we've what i think we've had drones all the way to pluto or some shit like mm-hmm. that probably not that far but we've had drones a few of the planets none of them bitches got life force on it so you mean to tell me in our galaxy one planet's got life force on it and they want to act like if you expand that to the universe that's not good enough I, I mean that, that. I mean that's a that's a that's a valid yeah, point. Yeah. The thing, that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you, when you put it that route, like, <laughs> yeah, people are being the the, the, the the amount of planets what, that what we've explored, like, the amount of planets that we've explored in real life uh, don't seem like there's any life <laughs> life or more than on it. on zero of any of those planets. That's a good. That's a good way to what, what, to what bring I would that like up. is them using our galaxy and doing fun shit with our galaxy you know what i'm saying like that's what i would like if there's an earth there or mars i would like stuff like well, that we like know, put an we easter know, egg on the moon landing it, it, stuff like that would be fun yeah we know you know the, the real planets and stuff is going to be there like what pluto and the, we even got screenshots pluto's of not pluto. technically a planet anymore it's, it's a dwarf it's a dwarf pluto's yeah, forever a planet. planet in my heart i don't care what anybody yeah says. They, they they declassified <laughs> as a planet it's considered a, a like a giant door for something like that who would, who would it hurt to keep it just called planet yeah uh, I mean, who's, who's, it, who's a realistic i guess it would be one of those things where like like science wise and like logistically it's not a planet yeah uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it in, in Logan. You just, I'm about to, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm about to download on a rogue ally is the outer worlds. Cause the thing about the outer worlds, even though it's like, it's play anywhere, it's um, playing it on Xbox. Isn't really equivalent to playing it on like game pass for PC because they're two separate achievements. So I can actually have a reason to replay through the game. Uh, oh, shit. So, um, yeah, no, I'm playing through just the, the base. Cause I never got around to actually uh, going through it all. And stuff, I love so. that game, dude. I loved um, it. 
I've been having a having a decent amount of fun in it. Absolutely. Um, the because I'm I'm not playing the they did a up, that upgrade whatever version I yeah. think last year. The next version. Um, I'm just playing the base the base version of the game at the uh, the F because it's FPS boost. Um, so that's the version that I'm playing, and the game looks still fantastic yeah. for yeah. a game that came out in 2019. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's 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 a, it's a good game, good looking game. Definitely, I played uh, through the base game in the DLC, uh, and um, I like I don't mind playing through the game. I started a, a run on a PC. I'm actually gonna finish finish it on a Rogue Ally just because I wanted to play, make different, different, and truly different decisions. Since you can be two, you can play, be multiple types of like personalities, and that uh, changes the outcome of who's rolling with you on your ship, who's Who's gonna be your companions and stuff like that? Um, it's a really good game. Shout out to us, Obsidian. Finally got my obviously my Starfield headset, Starfield controller. Uh, good thing sneak uh, about this uh, little Easter egg about this controller. It literally starts to tell you how to play. Like if you think about the designs, the design. Uh, like for example, I, I'm assuming the LB button is to scan because it says scan. Uh, the RB button is to change from third person. Uh, to first person and vice versa. B is to exit whatever menu you're on. A is to, I guess. Oh, this is must be the ship control. Full, full control. Uh, GRP2. I wonder what that is. Throt. That must be the ship control. Uh, power distance. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's literally giving you like hints of what like the button controls um are, but. This is a very, very cool controller. Um, I'm not even going to use it until like Starfield comes out. Um, grip, see-through uh, triggers. Uh, good looking controller. I don't want to get like any of like, you no know, skin cells on it until the game comes out. So I'm going to hold it in this box. However, I will be utilizing... Oh, damn. Did I hit, I hit a, a settings button? Hopefully, I didn't stop. I will be utilizing... Um, these headsets because I've done giving my uh, son uh, my black Xbox headsets because I don't mind using the Starfield headsets uh, uh, before time. Um, can you confirm? Does this thing make Starfield noise? Yes, it does. All right, I'm looking forward to it. But awesome, awesome podcast, uh, Attic Logan. Uh, Thank you guys for tuning in again and showing up again for another weekend. Uh, we're doing a good job hitting our time targets, uh, the had 90 minute uh, zone. So I'm gonna give you guys this opportunity uh, to, you know, you know, shout out and thing, highlight any projects or anything that you're gonna be doing, um, and anything we should be looking forward to in the, the incoming week. I will. We we're doing a podcast tomorrow. ILP. Uh, it's 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 going to be a crazy show. King King just popping off in the chat every day, uh, so I'm sure I'm going to sit through a rant 30 40 minutes. I got to tune into that definitely. And we're going to talk about um, Final Fantasy 16. Played a little bit more of it last night. I want to get a good amount of it taken care of before the game uh, before the podcast tomorrow. So I'll probably play more tonight and a little bit tomorrow. Appreciate for coming through. Appreciate Logan for coming through. Uh, it was a fun show, and uh, I got to go back to moving. All right, buddy, Bye. Logan. Nah, I'm just uh, I'm just ready to get back into playing some Final Fantasy 16, man. It's a absolutely fantastic game. I highly recommend it to anybody that's that uh, that likes games. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Like I, I played it last night. I played it Thursday, uh, and I got my whole weekend kind of set up to just be digging to, into that. So uh, yeah, that's where I'll be this weekend. Awesome. Well, this week I'm gonna try to you know you know uh, get some gaming more. Like you got me inspired to you know uh, to re um, get back into the outer worlds. I'm gonna do that on the Rogue Ally. Um, playing through some Spider Man DLC also on the Rogue Ally. Um, and uh, I downloaded Dark Tide. I haven't touched it since it launched, and I know it's. I don't know if this game's ever coming to Xbox, but. Another... Yeah, I was about to ask. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, that Dark Tide game. Yeah. Like, it's... Wait, where the hell is the, the Xbox release of that game? I have no that, idea, bro. That came out. Oh, when did that come out? It, so it was supposed to be a launch title, and then it got delayed into 2022, maybe. 
Yeah, I think it didn't. I think it eventually came out in November of 2022. And bro, that's uh, that's insane that we're still waiting on, and on yeah. that game because it was it was champion to be a, a Xbox exclusive. Yeah. Here you know, we are. It's like, bro, it's no like game. it's I don't know what about the game that makes it any I don't know what the game is doing that's keeping it off of Xbox or what makes it special. Just a regular fucking okay. uh Dark Tide. It's like literally, literally a Left 4 Dead game. It's that's what that is. Dark Tide. Microsoft needs to start playing hard, uh, playing hardball, man. People deliberately miss their platform. They just say, "Keep your shit." Like also, also, you know what? What you know? What other game that is like missing? That's has like, or did it? Did it potentially get pushed? That replaced. Replaced. Oh Remember yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Remember that? That was like a, that was at the showcase last year, and yeah. it was supposed to come out, come out last year, and it's Re- MIA. Replace is going to be the next. Uh, what's that uh, game that 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 had the same type of graphics that was revealed in like 2017? It was called. Uh, oh my God, he had the same type of art style, right? Um, and we haven't. Like, I was actually we excited for me again. I'm starting to get to the point where Microsoft needs to make a team. That's literally their only job. Yeah, it's, it's, it's to go and help people port games to Xbox. <laughs> we'll see, man. But it's been an they awesome. need their own Nexus. Yeah, they, and maybe they'll get that, man, with certain affinity and 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 in you know, Paradox Interactive. Who knows, man? Uh, thank you guys uh, for tuning in to another episode, episode <laughs> six, playing Xbox. We will see you guys next Saturday, and hopefully, we'll you know have either we'll something. It'll, it should be a big show, regardless, but. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, subscribe to the Weapon Wheel Patreon to continue to support this podcast and all the other podcasts under the Weapon Wheel uh, network. And uh, we'll be continue to pump it out the podcast, and I'll be continuing to pump it out videos on my channel over at Kids Smooth. But once again, thank you guys. Make sure you submit the Patreon questions. We love to read them here. It gets the conversation going. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best oh, bot. Real quick. People that watch this, I did not run for no damn persona last week. I had shit I had to do. People were sitting there tagging me. I see people in the comment section. Fuck all you guys. Okay. I, I had legit grown ass shit going on. I had to tend to. People think I'm going to run over a video. How many times me and Persona's argued over something? And you think I'm going to run from Persona? We have argued every every month as long as I can remember. <laughs> hey, man, there's 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 no way. Uh, how can I say this? Um, you can't put if you put a PlayStation fanboy in a room with a someone that's perceived to be an Xbox fanboy or an Xbox fanboy in a room that the, the, you're not going to get through that conversation without an an argument. But um, uh, that was that was very entertaining, uh, by the way. But again, thank you guys. For tuning in, as always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.